Hello everyone, back to tuning in today's uh, second video. We're going to have a look at the ECFWF extended model uh, for today's second video. So uh, we're going to be looking at mean cell pressure anomalies, 500 millibar height anomalies, temperature and precipitation anomalies uh, for the next uh, four weeks for, for, Europe, for Europe and for the UK. Uh, as well, and I shall get on with that for you uh, very shortly. Just say that the first video release was the ENSO update. So uh, have a look to see what's going on uh, with uh, landing. Yeah, that's February's ENSO update uh, being released already today, and we're gonna have a 10 to 14 day for you uh, later on this afternoon. Now, with the Tuesday uh, ECM extended update, we have been carrying over weeks five and six data to our Wednesday live streams now of course we have uh stopped doing the wednesday live streams so for the time being so so there could be no stream tomorrow so i don't have to carry uh over um you know the data for weeks five and six into the live stream so i'll just show you the whole uh, the whole range remember this is a 30 day forecast primarily but then you know at the end i'll show you weeks uh five and six data as well why not why not do that as i don't have to carry the data over to the wednesday live stream uh, anymore right so uh let's do this then i'm gonna start off with mean cell pressure anomalies for week one uh this will take us from the 22nd of february to the uh, 1st of march an area of high pressure will be dominating across many parts of uh, europe during uh, this week. So uh, we'll have plenty of high pressure really from the Med all the way up to northern parts of Europe. Low pressure will be out into the Atlantic, the jet stream will be doing something a little bit like that. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be quite a dry week coming up for many parts of Europe and it will be mild as well uh, for most areas as we'll be pulling up the air from the south. This is the 500 millibar height anomaly uh, for uh, week one, taking this from 22nd of February to 1st March. Again, high pressure will be extending up from the Med into Northern Europe. Low pressure will be out in the Atlantic. Jet stream and the flow will be doing something like that. So uh, again, high pressure dominates across much of Europe in the week ahead and uh, the position of the high pressure drags up uh, really mild air from the south as well. Temperature anomalies are going to be uh, very mild away from the extreme east and northeast, anyway, where, it, where it is a little bit colder through there. But most parts of Europe are going to be significantly mild now, especially so through northern and western Europe, where we're into those orange to red colours. Uh, so anomalies, uh, you know, going to around eight degrees above average in some areas. Most parts of Mediterranean are also looking very mild as well. The far eastern portion of the Mediterranean is a little bit cooler, but again, most parts of the, of the bed are looking uh, warmer than average. And the precipitation anomaly is going to be very substantially drier than average too. Uh, it's going to be a little bit wetter than average Scandinavia. That's where it have a bit of influence from like westy winds. And into Ireland and the UK, uh, western areas will be a little bit wet and average through there uh, as well, as we're exposed to uh, air coming in off the Atlantic. And where it's probably getting a bit stuck as they come against that ridge. But that said, there are exceptions. Most places are going to be drier than average, like southeastern England, France, Spain, and Portugal. In the west, all the way over to Black Sea in the east. So you see where the high pressure is uh, clearly dominating, bringing lots of dry weather for week one. Right, we go through to week two. It's going to be the first through to the 8th of March. Uh, high pressure signals continue. So we get lots of high pressure dominating across many central and western parts of Europe as well. Um, probably bringing in a little bit of a northwesterly into the far north of Europe. So it might be slightly uh, colder across the north of Scandinavia and down to the Baltic Sea area. Maybe a little, a little bit of influence from the north there. But most places, again, are going to be dry and uh, anti-cyclonic high pressure dominated. The uh, week two 500 millibar height only for the first week of March, again, is dominated by high pressure across most parts of northern and western Europe. You see that Eastern Europe does have this trough digging in, so that's where we'll have colder air through that eastern and far northeastern part of Europe. But again, most places are under high pressure and having plenty of dry weather. The uh, week 
back uh, to temperature anomaly. Shows a little bit of an east-west split. So the, the eastern part of Europe is going a bit colder and average now as the wind sort of goes into the northwest to north. We start to pull down some colder air into the east of Europe. And that extends all the way down from like northwestern Russia down towards Greece um, through here. Now out in the west it's going to be much milder and average through there. Most parts of Scandinavia, Ireland, UK, down to France, into Germany for example, above average uh, with temperatures there quite widely so an east-west split with the warmest temperatures in the west and the coldest temperatures in the east mediterranean wise we also see this east-west split so the central and western part of med is warmer than average the eastern part of med is colder than average and the week two uh, precipitation anomaly from the 1st through to the 8th of March is largely drier than average, really, through most parts of Europe, a significantly drier than average week coming up, especially so for these uh, western regions. It's a little bit less dry, but, you know, it's not on the dry side uh, for the east. You really have to go to, like, the far north of Scandinavia, so Norway, up to northern Sweden, up here. Whereas wet average, of course, that could be snow still. Uh, and around the Black Sea, it looks a little bit wet, probably, from uh, thunderstorms being caused by instability with those northerly winds. But most places are dry yet again. Right, we go through the week uh, three, which is going to take us from the 8th through the 16th of uh, March. So this one... Uh, showing a ridge uh, from the Atlantic, got a ridge from the Atlantic going into uh, west parts of Europe, but it's weakening though, this ridge. Low pressure is up to the north, that's a cold trough, again, cold air digging in to the north and the northeast. A little bit of low pressure around Spain as well, and a high pressure uh, sort of through these eastern parts of Europe. A little bit of a change in the pattern beginning to take place there in the second week of March. The uh, week three, 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. Again, a ridge from the Atlantic into Western Europe. Low pressure is to the north. Jet stream is coming through uh, a little bit like that. The uh, week three temperature anomaly uh, is generally mild and average still, especially so through the central parts of the Med and also across northern uh, parts of Europe as well through, through Scandinavia. Cold and average in the far east and northeast and a little bit below average out to our southwest as well. Near normal with the temperature anomaly uh, elsewhere. And I think much of West Europe is still really favouring uh, uh, favoring uh, mild and average temperatures to be honest. And the week three uh, precipitation anomaly is largely drier than average, really. So, so yeah, pretty dry for these western parts of Europe anyway. A little bit wetter up to the north and down through the central part of Med. And this southeastern part of Med also looks uh, reasonably dry as well. Right, go through the week four. Uh, which is the end of the forecast time frame. But remember, as we're not live streaming at the moment, I will show you weeks five and six data because why not? This is how week four is looking, uh, though, in terms of the 30-day forecast. We have high pressure pulling out into the Atlantic. Otherwise, very weak signals could be a re-establishment of like a westerly type flow. We might be starting to see a re-establishment of westies, but there isn't all that much uh, to go on there for week four. Uh, week four, 500 millibar height anomaly from the 15th, 22nd of March. Uh, looks like that. So low pressure beginning to come back around Greenland and Iceland. High pressure pulling out into the middle of the North Atlantic, probably sending the flow and the jet stream on a northwest southeast alignment. Could be turning cooler and more unsettled for northern and western parts of Europe there, I think. Week 4 temperature anomaly is gradually cooling down for that exceptionally mild end of February. Uh, you know, week by week, the, the temperature anomaly gradually cools down. Maybe now, for a very weak signal, but maybe now hinting at being slightly cooler than average, if anything, for those western parts of Europe. Eastern, southeast of Europe, going a little bit milder than average. Most other areas are average or no signal. And the week for uh, precipitation anomaly looks like that so uh it's beginning to turn a little bit more unsettled through some parts of europe again a very very weak signal uh really and uh, i would say probably just gradually turning into more of a zonal uh west northwesterly type pattern I will show you week five and six data as well. So, uh, so that's it for the 30-day forecast part of this. But I'll just show you weeks five and six. Uh, so this is how the week five means of pressure normally looks. Very little signal, uh, really. This is how the week six 
mean cell pressure anomaly looks. Again, very little in the way of a signal. Uh, perhaps, uh, this is, by the way, going to be the 29th of March of the 5th of April, so that's going up to uh, Easter. Um, maybe just a little bit of a sign of some northern blocking coming back around Greenland. There is high pressure across eastern parts of Europe as well. No corresponding trough, but with a ridge there probably pulling up southerly winds. Bit of northern blocking there trying to pull down northerly winds. You'd probably expect a trough to be through here. So that might not be uh, a particularly good uh, sign for, for Easter. But never mind, it's six weeks away. It's not worth worrying about uh, at all. The week five, uh, 500 millibar height normally looks like that. Again, very weak. So you see high pressure gradually pulling away from us, though, into the second half mark, going further out into, like, the uh, into, like, western part of the North Atlantic, actually. Um, so gradually that high pressure is getting further and further away from us. Um, that's how we look as we get through the week six. Now, that might be a little bit better, actually, because this ridge is actually through central and western parts of it. So that could draw up some quite warm air from the south. But, but it, it's very, you know, quite a complicated pattern and again with a ridge just there uh, and a ridge just there there's got to be a trough somewhere uh, in the north atlantic which is probably through here so so yeah you know it's a little bit confused but that might be rather unsettled even if it's not all that cold it might be rather unsettled around the east of here week five temperature anomaly uh near normal to perhaps a little bit above average week six temperature anomaly goes milder through most central and western parts of europe and then finally the week five uh precipitation anomaly very weak signals no signal there uh, really and then the week six precipitation anomaly if it'll show it, there it is. Uh, again, very, very weak signals. Uh, really possibly favouring rather drier conditions through central and northern parts of Europe. Uh, right, so that's brought you up to date, Ben, uh, with our European 30-day uh, outlook forecast. Uh, so, uh, you have to do it all over again uh, next Tuesday. We do it on a Friday as well. So, that's more focused on the UK and Ireland than, than the rest of Europe. But we will have a look at the extended ECM model on Friday as well. It updates on a Monday night and on a Thursday night. Uh, right, so that's it for that one. Uh, don't forget to check out the ENSO update. We're going to be back very shortly with your 10 to 14 day, which will include all our regular features. So come back that then. For this video, though, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.